Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we're going to have a brief look at Linux Mint's new tool, which is going to be a GUI updater. Not the regular package updater that we're used to, but a distribution upgrader. So this allows you to go from Linux Mint Debian Edition 4 to Linux Mint Debian Edition 5, or Linux Mint 20.2 to 20.3, etc. Now, they did give a little warning while the beta is out, it is right now out as a beta to upgrade your Debian Edition version 4 to Debian Edition version 5. The Upgrading from the 20 to the 21 is not yet stable because Linux Mint 21, which is in pre-alpha, is not yet stable. It would work. You could possibly kill your system because it is not ready to test yet. Um, but the tool does work for upgrading your Linux Mint Debian Edition. And today I'm going to go ahead and download the tool. I'm going to show you how to use it. Now, a little caveat here is I didn't have a Linux Mint Debian Edition 4 in my download archives. And so what we're doing is we're actually going to be running it on a Linux Mint Debian Edition version 5. But hey, you can actually use it to upgrade some other things in your system as well. So why not? The application will work. Now, while it is a tool that is available as of now, it is uh, it needs to be run from the command line. And so if you're not familiar with the command lines, they do make it very easy on the Linux Mint blog. And I will go ahead and put a link to the blog post down here. You just need to run an apt update and install Mint upgrade package. Once you have the Mint upgrade package, you're going to run it as a sudo user by just typing in sudo mint upgrade, and then you're going to get a nice GUI box. So now you can go ahead and run through your system here. And they do tell you here on the blog post that once you're done, remove it, uh, remove the Mint upgrade, and then reboot your computer. So let's go ahead and have a look at what this is going to look at. Uh, so I'm going to run a, um, I'm going to start here on Linux Mint Debian Edition. We're going into the terminal and we're doing a sudo apt update. You're going to need to enter your password and it's going to check for an update to anything. So now here you can see I have 79 packages that can be upgraded, whatever. We'll get to that later. Uh, sudo apt install mint upgrade. Now I've just installed it already as a test. This is just the command you're going to see. You'll see I already have the newest version. Now we're going to run it, sudo mint upgrade. This gives us a nice GUI tool. The first thing you want to do before hitting let's go is go up to your hamburger menu up there into your preferences. Now you're going to see a requirements and an orphans packages in here. So uh, we'll get into that in just a moment, but let's go ahead and have a brief look at the requirements first. You can enable or disable time shift. I love this option because I do not like using time shift on my devices. So for me, I disable that. Software updates is going to give you any updates to your packages. I'm guessing supported Linux Mint versions is going to make sure the thing only runs on a version of Linux Mint that works. And then the orphan packages, you can turn on or turn off. What these are is any packages you have installed that is not in the repositories. So I went ahead and installed my brother printer and I didn't know the package name for it. So I just typed in brother dash printer as a uh, placeholder. Just did that as a placeholder. That won't actually do anything in the current thing. But fortunately, as we run the tool, it's going to give us a list of these packages. So basically, it's just running the mint upgrade command in the background. And this is going to first update the system, check for hold packages, look at the package repositories, and now it's looking at foreign packages. These are going to be those orphan packages that do not have... Um, system uh, they don't have versions in your repository and now it gives me a list now i'm not sure why my linux headers are on here i might have actually added these later i don't remember this is my linux mint debian edition i was using for testing some xfce stuff so i'm not sure why the linux headers are showing up um, but the other four there the br scan 4 br scan s key and the two other ones there these are directly related to the printer drivers that i installed it's the only thing i could think of off the top of my head that i could install quickly without uh, you know, doing a lot of hunting for some orphan package to install. 
Now, if I were thinking when I recorded the footage here, I should have opened up a text pad and manually copy these over. So then I can go into this list. Let's delete the uh, brother printer there and we'll go ahead and add these guys in. BR scan 4. The next one was BR scan 4 dash uh, S key. And then the other ones I didn't bother filling out for the purpose here because it's just simply a test how the system works. If I would have a suggestion for the Linux Mint team, allow us to either copy these or highlight them and click a button to add to that preferences list without having to manually do it. That would really be awesome. But hey, whatever. This is still the beta. Maybe that's uh, the information. A few, few of you guys let them all know in the beta testing as well. We can get enough of people. Maybe we can go ahead and do that. Now, the next step here is it's going to be doing a simulation download. This is what Linux Mint always does on the upgrade. It just runs through all of the upgrade and things as a simulation just to see what would happen. This is an extra step to make sure things don't go bad. If there's some problem, it's going to just fail out and not mess with your computer up. So at this point here during the test, it's actually not making any changes. It just looks like it is. So you can see here, it's going to require some extra download spaces to get um, this Linux um, uh, image updated. This is the 510. Um, and so we'll go ahead and uh, click through this and then click your OK once we are done. And then once we do that, it's going to begin the process of doing the package downloads. And then once it does the downloads, it's going to do your installations. And then it's going to actually begin the process. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning, I'm already on Linux Mint Debian Edition 5. So why is this working? Well, one of the steps is just to make sure packages are upgraded. And hey, there were 79 packages that weren't upgraded. So that's all that we're seeing right now. It's going through, it's uh, checking on everything, it's going to be finalizing everything. And then of course, as they said in their blog post, once it is done, we're gonna get a little smiley face. It indicates it's all upgraded. Uh, in this case, I rebooted the system before I removed the Mint upgrade. I don't think it makes a huge difference, but their blog notice does say remove the package and then do the upgrade. I don't think you're going to have a problem one way or the other. But uh, regardless, this tool is a very nice tool, and it's once again why Linux Mint is doing so good, that they're giving us GUI tools, they're making it easier to use their system, they're making it easier to upgrade your system down the road, and honestly, this is just, this is why Linux Mint is so good. We'll have these tools, it's going to allow us in the future to upgrade our systems without going through and following the list of terminal things, and I envision what's going to happen soon is they're going to make this available directly in a GUI from the menu. Hey, just have it on the, the terminal right now for your beta testing. That's what I think is going to happen. So once again, Linux Mint still stands out as one of my favorites. Uh, sure, there's a few things that I would disagree with. Obviously, that happens all of life. But if you're looking for the nearest perfect Linux distribution, particularly to get started, definitely have a look at the Linux Mint uh, because it's just so good and what it can do. So with that, thanks for following along here and um, have a look over the website there at switchtolinux.com for any support links and things like that. And with that, thanks for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.